Before Games Workshop and Creative Assembly got together, there were some pretty weird Warhammer RTS games. My favorite of those games is Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat. My memory of acquiring the game is a bit poignant, and probably the reason the game still sticks in my head enough to make this video. The game meant a lot to me as it was the only game I owned that I hadn't beaten at that point, and so I spent a lot of time grinding away at it. Also, at the time I first bought the game, I had no idea what Warhammer was, and thus the game served as my introduction to the whole universe. My family were homeless at the time, bouncing from place to place, but my stepfather managed to scrounge up enough money to buy me a used game for my birthday. I went into the store, and if you know me, you know I'm a very decisive shopper, and I already had my eyes set on Red Alert for PS1. I was ready to walk in and walk out, but the store clerk stopped me. He said the words that anyone knows will invoke immediate compliance in a kid of my age. He looked disdainfully at the Red Alert case and said, Do you want to play a real RTS? The scorn for my choice of game being so mainstream being evidenced, and also not being a lame loser, I said yes. He took away my copy of Red Alert and handed me a copy of Shadow of the Horned Rat, and I went home and put it in my used PC, and I saw this. If you're a Warhammer fan and just finished that cinematic and you've never seen it before, you should like and subscribe just for me recording it in HD for you. This is Warhammer lore-wise at its best, its darkest, and its more scavity yes yes than ever before. Imagine seeing that when you're like 12 years old and having never heard of Skaven before. I knew about elves and dwarves, but ratmen slicing people's throats was a whole new level of awesome. I was hyped but I was also about to get my ass kicked by a war game designed for adults, when I didn't even know what a war game was. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here. I want to go into a bit of a deep dive of how this love child between SSI and Games Workshop came to be. Shadow of the Horned Rat was developed by Strategic Simulations Incorporated and released in 1995 on PC, and then got a somewhat quirky version released on PS1 in the following year. SSI was one of the OG PC game developers. It was founded by Joe Billings in the summer of 1979 in order to translate tabletop war games into some of the very first PC games. And that's exactly what good old Joel did, creating some of the best strategy games ever and introducing many people to the world of wargaming, including myself. SSI has some big hits with their D&D games as well as the hugely successful Panzer General series but they also published a lot, and I mean a lot of games, many of which they didn't develop themselves, and many of which by the mid-90s ended up in the $5 game bin in the back of the store, which is where I bought most of my games from back then. But Shadow of the Horned Rat was not one of them. This was a standard price game as far as I can remember, at least the PS1 version that I acquired. There's a host of other SSI War games I have a particular soft spot for, particularly the rendition of The Battle of the Bulge, a war game about the World War II battle, which I actually got to play at one point with my grandfather, who had been stationed as one of the ancillary artillery brigades in support of the 101 Airborne in Bastogne. But again, 
the nostalgia is getting me off topic. The game itself is an oddball game. Both the PS1 and PC versions control rather similarly in that they're both very clunky. You can spin the camera over the 3D battlefield, give commands to your units to move, attack, or charge. You can cast spells for magical items or use your wizards. The Winds of Magic system is also implemented from the war game. On top of all this, there is a Might button you can spam on one particular unit to give them greater strength in battle, a great addition that keeps you spamming away as opposed to sipping a cup of tea after the initial orders have been given at the beginning of the battle. As the game progresses, you can add more units, and taking the right units into battle is crucial for victory, but given the way the game is designed, take all the cannons you possibly can, because if you think that dwarf ranged units are strong in modern Warhammer games, this game really relies on cannons to win. But the game itself is also quite hard. And it's not hard just due to strategic complexity. And it's not hard because the controls are unfair. It's hard because of attrition. You see, you have limited, and I mean limited reinforcements. You can generally replace about 2 to 8% of a unit's health after battle. If you lost more than that, well, tough luck, because that weakened unit is going back onto the battlefield for a large section of the game. The number of hours I spent recording footage for this video is mind-boggling because a few bad dice rolls can spoil it all. Reload and hope for the best. There is definitely strategy to playing the game, but the amount of reloading necessary to succeed seems to be built into the game's mechanics, and as a kid with only one game to play at the time, it definitely did extend the lifespan of the game for me. But I don't remember Shadow of the Horned Rat simply because of my traumatic childhood or its equally traumatic difficulty spikes, though there could be something to that. But because it introduced me to the world of Warhammer and to Warhammer lore, and in my humble opinion, the story of Warhammer Shadow of the Horned Rat helps nail the feeling of a Warhammer narrative better than a lot of other games ever made. We begin as Captain Bernard, a Reichlander who is in charge of the Grudgebringer Mercenary Group. I'm assuming there's quite a lot of more lore and background for him possibly in the tabletop game, but I've never actually dug into it. I'm just going to address the game here as the game tells it. We begin as a small mercenary company with only two units. Our first mission is a simple one in which we need to drive back two units of orcs with our two units from a village south of the Black Mountains. Uh, Schnappelberg needs hired thugs for protection from orc and goblin raiding parties. It is known that green skins have established a camp somewhere in this area. Four nearby villages have been pillaged in the last three weeks. The locals live in fear of an attack. We will be stationed in this forsaken backwater for two weeks. During this time, it will be our duty to protect the peasants and their property. Two weeks will give you enough time to find us more work. Perhaps something that pays a little better. I'm tired of risking my life for peasants and ale money. Meanwhile, as all this happens, things are developing elsewhere. We then get an escort mission that allows us to recruit a new unit and get paid for defending a caravan against yet more arcs. Ambush! But by the third mission, we're approaching some more narrative content. We've been approached by a local border prince, a man named Sven Carlson, who wants us to hunt down a man named Helen, who is associating with Skaven. We see Helen go on to meet with the Skaven, and upon your appearance, he is, well, as the Skaven would put it, die die. Meanwhile, as all this happens, things are developing elsewhere. Ah, 
After defeating the Skaven, we find a map of activity that gives us an area to patrol. After wiping up the Skaven present in the area, we return to Sven Carlson for payment. And then, this happens. came to our town. They took Ilmarid, my advisor, and slaughtered anyone who resisted them. Though he hasn't been in my service long, he is a good friend, and I will pay well for his safe return. Please help me. The city has been sacked, and his suspect advisor has been taken by the Skaven. We pursue the Skaven and find them engaged in a battle with some dwarves who seem, being stubborn dwarves, to have radically overestimated how strong they are, the wee feckers. After saving the dwarves, Ilmarin does the big reveal of showing himself to be a high elf named Saradan, who is working against the Skaven forces in the region. All this wrapped up with some nice elf dwarf racism aside, we head back to Sven Carlson's hideout to inform him of the good news. We arrive in the city to find this from the Coulson family hideout in the foothills of the Black Mountains. We were discovered and overwhelmed by orcs. Many were killed. Coulson's family were taken as slaves with the rest of the survivors. How Hearing the news from the guard, we're off to rescue Carlson's family. Having done so and escorted them back to Wiesenheim, we are now at a crossroads. We can take out the remaining orcs for a handsome amount of money and troops from Carlson, we can assist Ilmarin in going directly to Lorne to combat the Skaven threat, or we can assist the dwarves who want us to march north to relieve the siege of Zafbar. I always opt to take out the orcs as the extra money and regiments are worth it, but then you might think you should head directly to Lorne. But you should not. As far as I can tell, the game is tricking the player here. It is literally impossible to make your way to Lorne without first relieving the siege of Zafbar. You'll be trapped in a creepy mountain pass by near endless numbers of Skaven. If someone has actually beaten the March to Lauren series of the, uh, of the missions in this way, let me know. It certainly wasn't possible for childhood me, and I don't think it's possible for childhood me now. In fact, I think it might not be possible for anyone. So the game's giving you a little bit of a bait and switch here. You need to support your dwarven brethren. And if you're a reasonable person who doesn't bear a grudge towards dwarves, see what I did there, you'll head north to Zufbar. We get another great cinematic as we defend a dwarven bastion further south of Zufbar that's been annihilated by the same army of orcs we've been dealing with off and on since the beginning of the game. Finally, making our way into Zufbar through some tunnels, this is where the game really kicks off with a variety of epic battles against Skaven hordes as you and your mercenary company liberate the city from the Skaven siege. Having liberated Zufbar from the siege, you're off to Nuln with a dwarven escort. Our good old boy Thanquil is planning to summon the Horned Rat by corrupting an elven men here in Lauren Forest. And so, after some more mercenary work around Nuln, you're at last off for Lauren Forest. We meet some forest people who have had a random magical gem MacGuffin stolen from them that our good old buddy Thanquil needs to summon the Rat God. Yes, yes, we're now off to face off against the big happy orc and his rat daddy Thanquil. We beat the orcs in the first of two epic battles and smash our Grudgebringer sword into the cursed Skaven-forged axe, liberating the orcs from the control of Thanquil. We then face off against the core Skaven army and allow the dwarves to smash the elven men here, removing the chance of this sort of nonsense from happening again. Saradan is not happy with all this, but he can f*** right back off to Ulthwan at this point, because the game is over. Oh my, this game was... The sheer number of reloads is insane. Going through guides and other footage on this, I realize it's not just childhood old man Banjo who struggled. This is one of those RTS that mimics the mechanics of original war games very well, the way SSI studios tend to do. And oh boy, oh boy, does that mean that a few bad dice rolls can really ruin your game and you just need to reload and start over again. This is why making multiple saves is also important. In the end, Shadow of the Horned Rat, as a game, is not nearly as good as I remembered it, and it probably deserves the 60 to 70 percentile scores it got at the time of its release.
but it harkens back to an era when people took tabletop games and when they made those games into PC games, they really employed the same tabletop mechanics as on the tabletop games, rather than just converting them into something new. It's one of the most underrated SSI games, I think, and I recommend you check it out on GOG.com if you want to, as the current version runs reasonably well. SSI would also go on to produce a sequel called Dark Omen in 1998, which I only had a chance to play briefly at a friend's house, or maybe I rented it from Blockbuster. The game is sadly not currently available anywhere legally, which is really sad. Really hope GOG sort out the ability to sell it as there are multiple people that seem to be demanding it, but nothing for the past 10 years now. My initial impression was that Dark Omen was much improved, but yet it was even more difficult than the original Shadow of the Horned Rat. I think the best games are the ones we connect with in our memories, whether or not those games are good or not. Shadow of the Horned Rat will always be the lens through which I see the Warhammer world, just as my sister will always see Lara Croft through Tomb Raider Dark Angel. In the end, I think I got the better deal out of it. If you watched to the end of this video, please give me a like and subscribe. This video took a lot more work than I thought it would due to how crazy it was to try to record the game play it and write about it all at once given just the crazy difficulty level and uh, the sporadic nature of recording these old games and getting everything working and if you do i'll see you in the next video